Hello. Um, I was gonna sit down and film a video today. Actually, a few videos, because we've got snowing outside, super snowing. Okay, I'll show you, because, well, why not? This is what I see right now. So I was gonna sit down and just start filming and my area is such a mess, like such, such, such a mess. So I need to clean it up. I thought I would bring you guys with me while I did that, trying to be better about filming all kinds of things and having variety. So I thought while I filmed this video, I would actually do my little challenge update while I'm cleaning my room. I did one the other day. I, f I totally filmed like a challenge update and I was such a negative ass bitch in that video. Like I was literally so negative. I've actually had a couple conversations with my husband since that day. Cause I just found myself in such a negative headspace that day. And we just were talking and he was, it was really interesting. He was like, you gotta change your mindset. Like you have to start being more positive and start saying things that are, even if it's the opposite of what you believe, it has to be what you start telling yourself. It's almost like the more negative things you say, the more negative things you'll believe. The more positive things you say, the more positive things you believe. And my constant, what's the word? Like my inner dialogue, my rumination, my thought process is very, very negative. Everything is always just like, and here we go again. You're not getting better. You're feeling worse. You're having a hard day, a hard life. Everything Everything's bad, everything's bad. If I feel something bad, it's like this catastrophic thinking. And I've never really, you know, in all my years of therapy and all my years of trying to get better, I've kind of never tried fixing my mindset. I've never even like given that much of a go. Um, my therapist tried to help me with it once where she was like, you know, we need to do, she calls it like, um, I cannot remember what it's called, but basically it's like, it's like, may you be, may I be well, may I be, healthy, may I be safe, things like that. You like speak to yourself that way. But I also noticed that, um, so in the last few days when I've been really having a hard time or my brain starts focusing on the negative, I'll change the thought process. If I'm like, oh, there you go, dissociating again, I'll be like, you know what, you're getting better. Each day, you're gonna get stronger. Each moment, you're going to feel better. You're going to have an easier time. Life is great. Your son is wonderful. Your husband is wonderful. Like I'm literally repeating positive affirmations in my head all day long to reprogram my subconscious to start trying to be positive because my subconscious, mean ass bitch, mean, 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 mean. And I know it's like that because it is programmed to be so. I have programmed it to search through the path most traveled and the path most traveled is negativity. It is very doom and gloom, very hopeless. And that's not, that's not good. That's not helpful. And that's not going to heal me. Limiting beliefs, very negative thought patterns beget negative thought patterns. And I realize that I have been kind of trapped in a negative thought pattern for probably ever. And I always just felt before, like there's no, it can't make a difference, but like, it's a really good point that Zach made. He was like, okay, so, when a plant is sick, plants, he's got to use that as my analogy because that's the only thing that I understand. When a plant is sick, like it's not getting enough water, it's not getting enough light, it's not getting enough care, it's not getting enough nutrients. If you start giving it all of what it needs, if you start giving it water, if you start caring for it, if you start fertilizing it, if you put it in the sun, it will get better, but not overnight. It takes quite a long time for a plant to bounce back. And a plant is a visual representation of this, of this entire body right here. That I always am like, well, I started eating healthy yesterday. Why don't I feel better? <laughs> I started taking L-theanine. I should feel better. And it's like, you've been taking it for three days. Things take a minute. You gotta have a little more patience with yourself, a little more kindness, a little more empathy. Just all the different things that I, I don't know. I just, I'm a very like um, switch. I also don't wanna make these little, these statements about myself like, oh, I am an anxious person. I am a depressed person. I am the, those are statements that are self-fulfilling. If I say things like, oh, I, I am just such an anxious person, or oh, I'm always in a bad mood, or I'm always having a hard time, then I'm gonna be always having a hard time. If you, I've always said this, if you say that you're a depressed piece of shit, you're probably gonna be a depressed piece of shit. Like it is what, it's what you say it is. Cause your subconscious mind from what I was reading, it controls like 80, 90% of your day. Your conscious mind is actually like all the things I'm doing right now, they're all subconscious movements. I'm not thinking about making these movements. I, they just are like, I just am making them. 
and my body is just kind of going through the motions and that the subconscious mind really takes a front seat in all of our day-to-day -day motions, like how you could be having a conversation and driving at the same time. You're not thinking about driving, you're just driving. And so I think that that is like a really important part of how I am going to get better in many different ways because I am going to make it a priority to when I notice my negative thought pattern, shift my negative thought pattern into a positive one because I am so not like that. And this is something I really haven't tried much of. I've always kind of just relied on talking it out in therapy or medication or doctors. And I think like, oh, this supplement will help. But like the supplement can only support. It can't create. Like the supplement's not going to give me better thoughts. I'm going to give myself better thoughts and I'm going to train my brain to focus on the positive no matter what. Like I have to. I have to because it's just not it's 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 only been hindering me for the longest time and especially when I like look at my life and I look at all the things that I have. I am so lucky to have the lucky's not the word. I am so blessed to have the things that I have and grateful and, and when you live in a very like limiting mindset, those things fall into the background. And I want to have gratefulness fall into the foreground of my thought patterns. I want to immediately wake up and think it's gonna be a good day and believe that and know it because what I say, it will be. It can even be a hard day and your mindset is everything. And I feel like I'm, I've really just been just kind of sinking into the, Negative isn't even the word, like just very um, hopeless mindset. Not hopeless in the way that it sounds like, like I'm just hopeless. It just feels like, and here we go again. It's a bad day. I knew it was gonna happen. Like, here we go. I knew that I was gonna have a hard time. I knew that medication wasn't gonna work. I knew that my depression was gonna come back. Like if I feel something negative, I immediately fall into that instead of push back against it. I very much like a spiral, a hamster wheel. I, I rabbit hole. I, I, I find it really easy to do that. And I have had a rougher mental space. Hi. Sorry, you didn't see me. Anyway, I have no idea what I was saying, but basically like I was thinking, I think I'm talking about like how our subconscious really controls much of our day and that, you know, I have, I have such a lovely life and I really need to start telling myself that so that I can get out of here and more into here, you know, the present day and yeah. So I, I have been doing that for the last few days and it is crazy. Like I, I the kind of deal I've made with myself is anytime you have a negative or spiraling thought, turn it to something positive. I have to do it like 600 times a day. I'm not even kidding. It's like a constant, it's constant work. It's not, it does not come very naturally to me to have a very positive outlook. I'm sure most of you are shocked by this. So actually I filmed a video the other day and I was talking in it about some stuff that I've had happen recently. Like I had some, having some health stuff go on and then some mental stuff go on, blah, blah, blah. And I actually feel like I have to, I had to just refilm because that video, I even say in it, I'm like trying to preface. I'm like, I know I sound really negative, but I'm not, I'm not trying to be, no, try harder, try harder, <laughs> try harder. So it is, the road most traveled and I'm going to try to make it the, the path least traveled over the course of time so that my brain starts to naturally gravitate towards good things instead of limiting beliefs. There's where we're going to start. As far as the challenge is concerned, as far as eating healthier, exercising, drinking water and staying off social media, where am I at with that? Well, uh, I am dr definitely drinking more water. So I think I talked to you guys in the beginning of this challenge about how I don't feel thirst. Like that is, that is true, true, true. And I actually spoke to my doctor about it. I was like, I literally don't feel thirst ever. And she said that she just wants me to keep drinking water, keep drinking water past that feeling. Like just go for it. And whether or not you feel thirst, keep drinking water. I had to get an app on my phone to remind me to drink water because I just don't feel thirst. Well, the more water I've been drinking, my thirst is coming back. Um, it's not fully back yet. I, I definitely am not like fully there, but I can almost tell like at the end of each day, I'm like, oh, I didn't have enough liquid because I can tell by either the way my head feels or kind of the way that I just, I feel a little more sluggish or something. So I find myself wanting to drink water. And this is like the first time in my entire life, but I've kept up on drinking water through the feeling of n no thirst. And it has brought my thirst somewhat back. So it's a slow, it's a slow build, 
but a build nonetheless. And I'm very excited about that because I have not felt thirst in oh, probably 10 years, 12 years. I don't know. I don't drink water because I don't feel thirsty. So that's very exciting. As much as everybody talks down on a Stanley because it's like the hype. Um, it's just a cup at the end of the day. But there is something to be said about the cup that I feel like it really does help me drink more water. And I don't like drinking out of a plastic straw. It's nothing to do with like feeling superior to plastic. It is, I don't like the, the taste of it. I don't like the taste of plastic in my mouth. So I bought these glass straws off of Amazon and they fit the Stanley cup really well and I love them. So I will have them linked down in the description if you guys are interested in checking out glass straws for the Stanley cup and then it turns it from metal and glass and then the plastic top is the only part which doesn't have any like flavor or taste or anything. And I also, you know, everyone's like, oh, Stanley cups contain lead. I bought little lead testing kit strips and no, not mine. Um, I think it's just on the inside and it's just the way it's manufactured. There's lead in the manufacturing process. I'm not saying that that's great, but I am saying it's not something that I'm trying to like freak out about because I don't think you're drinking lead at all. So that was water. As far as social media consumption, it's definitely way down. I am getting on social media here and there, but I am finding it really lovely to just read books. Like when I'm sitting down and I feel like scrolling social media, I actually, reduction of social media has, it's become now habit for me to go grab a book. So I'm actually reading a book right now. A, it's, I think it's called The Orchard Mason Bee. And um, I'm reading about mason bees because we bought mason bees at the Northwest Flower and Garden Show this year. If you don't know what mason bees are, they are a native, pollinator bee and they are not honey. They don't make honey, they're a solitary bee. And I just wanna learn all about them because we bought two beehives. Uh, they're not beehives, they're bee houses. They, they live in like little reeds and they like gather mud and they create a little wall and then they gather pollen, they make a little pollen ball and then they lay their egg in there in that little cell. They fill it all up with mud and then they move on to the next cell. And that's really their whole goal in life is just to reproduce. And they only live for like 30 days and they are, uh, like I said, a solitary bee. So they don't live in like a hive with other bees even though they all do live in one house. They don't care about the other bees. They don't like sting you. They're very, very docile. They kind of look like a housefly, sort of. They're really cute. And they're kind of like blue and they're very, very good pollinators. I know many of you probably don't care about this, but you know, whatever, this is my channel. I'm talking about what I care about. They're really, really good pollinators. Whereas like honeybees have a larger radius where they will go and eat pollen and drink nectar and things like that. Honeybees have a much larger radius in which they do, I think like one or two miles they'll go, but their pollination rate is about 5%. So they only pollinate 5% of the plants that they land on. Whereas mason bees, because their lifespan is so much shorter and they're a solitary bee, they don't have a queen, they don't have anything like that. They pollinate uh, like 95% of the plants that they land on. And they don't have like pollen bags on their legs. They just have it on their bellies and they kind of just belly flop into each plant and they have, they're such better pollinators than the honeybee. So uh, we bought two houses full of mason bees and I'm very excited to get those. So that's what I've been reading about instead of sitting and scrolling social media. And I feel like I'm learning a lot like I, the education that I have gotten from this book is actually really good I'm retaining it really well too which is awesome because sometimes I have a hard time retaining information and I feel like I'm retaining quite a bit about Mason Beast maybe probably because I'm very interested in them that has been great reading a lot of books and um yeah I feel really good about it been starting a lot of seeds staying off social media mostly I kind of sometimes will go on TikTok if somebody sends me one but my um social media balance is much better and um, it's not perfect but I actually don't want it to be perfect I don't want to completely go off of social media I just wanted to have a better balance with it so that I wasn't sitting on it all day long and it is much better eating wise I'm eating much better I'm still eating things that I want to eat at time and time again, but I am eating much. Just I'm making better choices. So that's great. I cut out wheat and eggs completely because I noticed that I think they were flaring up my head. I've really never tried cutting wheat out before. Weirdly, because I feel like that's something that a lot of people do. They will cut it out completely and notice that they feel a lot better, but I had never really tried because I just, I frankly didn't want to. I still don't want to, but what I will say is I thought it would be much harder than it is. There's a lot of gluten-free options out there. There's a lot of wheat-free options because there are a lot of people with celiac or, you know, just like food intolerances. So I've noticed that I thought that it would be really limiting, but it's really not like at all. I find that it's like kind of, it's just fine. Like it's not that big of a deal. For me at least, I've found a lot of options that taste really good. I don't feel limited in my food choices and my head is significantly better. It's significant. I can't believe it because for the longest time I was like, I don't think it's gonna make a difference at all. I don't know. I've had two cluster headaches in the last two weeks, two. That's huge. However, I will say they, they were more painful and they were, are completely non-responsive to medication now. I did go back to the doctor and got a referral to neurology and um, 
a new neurologist and they she also said that she prescribed me sumatriptan injections for the meantime i did take one of those sumatriptan injections and it did nothing it did nothing and the pain was 10 out of 10 like it was oh my god so that wasn't good but it just is what it is i'm so used to getting these but i will say that i haven't feared cluster headaches in a really long time because i always had a medication that would stop them and the last probably like few i've had maybe like six uh, my medication doesn't work so i'm just in pain the entire day and i'm out of commission completely the entire day so i cut eggs out too because i did that for little food diary and i feel like i noticed that after eating eggs i was having some flare-ups of pain so i cut out eggs which is unfortunate because i have a lot of chickens, you know, you just do what you gotta do. And right now is what, uh, I might introduce them again in the future, see if there's any issue. But as of right now, I'm okay not eating eggs and I'm just going to start preserving our eggs and I'm gonna start probably selling them at a, like a farm stand at the end of our street. I'm gonna build a farm stand and sell cut flowers, eggs. I might start freeze drying eggs and sell like freeze dry raw eggs at like a farmer's market or something. So, you know, we've got them, might as well use them and have somebody get some use out of them, especially since they're like farm fresh local my chickens are really really treated well so yeah um they eat all organic too so it's nice i could you know they're organic eggs so i have felt much better since cutting out wheat and eggs like it's significant it's significant as far as like physical my mental state has been a little rough but again i'm gonna stay positive on that and i'm not gonna sit in the negativity i'm not gonna say oh i don't know what's going i'm not gonna do that yes i've experienced dissociation and some issues with you know mental health but I think a lot of that has to do with my mindset. And I think a lot of that has to do like what I've said before, my very limiting beliefs. I went to church last week because I need to get into community that's positive and has good positive messaging, positive hope. It, and so uh, it's good. I really liked going. I feel like I, it was so interesting because I like had a whole conversation with my husband about like, I just feel hopeless and this and that and this and that. And it was just like, I just don't know what's going on. And I don't know why I feel this way and I'm scared and blah, blah, blah. And I had all these conversations. And then literally we went to church the next morning and the entire sermon was about having hope. I'm not kidding. It was like, they literally listened to me. I'm a very skeptical person. I have a hard time having faith. I have a hard time believing in things. I have a very hard time giving up. I'm just a very skeptical person. Like I am not one that's quick to belief or faith. And so I want to exercise that muscle in my brain because I find that I need something more and I am just going for it. Just trying to, trying to try something new because I know what doing things the way that I have been doing has how that's been working for me. It's not really working. So I'm gonna try new things out. This isn't me becoming, uh, I don't want anyone to think that, I, you know, sometimes when people can hear that people are like going to church or finding that, you know, they're looking to, you know, know God or like read the Bible. I've had some negative comments come from that. People being, oh, now you're gonna be one of those. It's like, there is no one of those. Like I am, I'm just a person trying to figure out life like the rest of us. And sometimes that means not being all about this and looking outward. Um, and everybody has their own ways that they do things like, you know, you just got to do what works for you. And I feel like this is the path that I feel like taking right now. And that is a path I shall take. So exercise, um, I've definitely been moving my body more, but not intentional exercise. I feel like I need to try something new. I need to maybe even get a gym membership or maybe I need to get like a personal trainer or like an online personal trainer or something to have somebody that, that can like, okay, it's time to work out. And I know that that will only benefit me too. Like exercise, eating well, like all these different things are all very beneficial to the, the end goal, which is, uh, just overall wellness. I will say I, I haven't been pushing myself to intentionally exercise, even though I know I should, even though I want to, I haven't been. I will, I've been doing a lot of yard work. We've been, you know, doing things out in the garden and shoveling compost and things like that. And while I know that that is moving my body, I want to make it a point to get outside and go for a walk every day, at least. I actually saw recently that Jacqueline Hill, um, she has, you know, had great success in weight loss and feeling better, moving her body and all those things. And she mentioned that just walking has been like her biggest thing and above weightlifting, above like pushing herself in the gym, like walking is so such an easy thing that most people can do. And you know, it's good too, because I can get out in nature, which would be great. I just haven't been because it's just like, I haven't been pushing myself to do so. But yeah, I um, also wanted to mention that I did see my doctor yesterday. So I actually saw I got a second opinion from another doctor and I saw my other doctor yesterday because I got all of my blood work results back. I actually talked recently about this in my Instagram about a new diagnosis that I just recently got. 
and it's called chronic reactivated Epstein-Barr. So I don't know if you guys know what Epstein-Barr virus is, but apparently it's a lot, but I'll go through it. Basically it's the virus that causes mono. She says that the majority of people in the world have it, like 90% of the United States population has had the Epstein-Barr virus in their system. But in certain people, it reactivates and causes symptoms. And that would be like fatigue, like crushing fatigue. <laughs> can really. So she tested me for Lyme disease and Epstein-Barr because they're kind of like Venn diagram. They almost like cross over as far as like symptoms and things like that. My Lyme disease test finally came back. It came back negative. Thank God I don't have chronic Lyme disease, but I do have a very high Epstein bar results. And so she went over those with me yesterday, but basically how she described it to me was like, I have the different markers in my blood and like zero to 18 or whatever is like the normal range. And mine was like over 600. It only goes to 600. They don't measure above 600. So mine was over 600. And then I also have the other marker in my blood, but then there was one that she said is when you have that in your blood, it means that the virus is currently replicating. Some schools of thought are that even though I don't have an app, active Epstein-Barr virus right now that I could give somebody EBV or mono by like sharing straws or kissing or things like that. Even though I don't have it, I have had it in the past apparently, which I have no idea when I would have had Epstein-Barr. I literally have no recollection, but I also don't go to the doctor. Like if I get the flu or flu symptoms or like COVID or something, like I don't go to the doctor and have them test me. I would just be like, oh, I have the flu. I obviously got mono at one point in the past and didn't know and probably just thought I had the flu or something. I do remember like 10 years ago getting so insanely sick. Like I am talking. It was one of the sickest I've ever been. And I remember being like, is this the flu? Because if this is the flu, I'm literally dying. Like my entire body hurt. I was crying rushingly tired. I slept for like an entire week straight, maybe a week and a half. Like I was so sick. I had to call out of work for like a week and a half. I thought that it was just the flu. And all this time I've been like, oh man, the flu is brutal. And it is, it is. But um, maybe that was when I got it. I, I couldn't tell you. Um, that was when I was working at the vet. And so um, what she said is that, and I've ha now had this confirmed by two different doctors. I saw a new doctor that my therapist recommended that she sees because she was like, this is a really good doctor. She's really thorough and she's really trustworthy and has really helped me a lot. So I went and talked to her and then I went and talked to my doctor and they both said the same thing. So this is two confirmed doctors now. And both of them said that with the numbers that I have, it's reactivated in my system. That's why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling probably for the most part, really, especially with the fatigue and the fatigue is it's been something I just think that I always thought I'm lazy like I just think I, I was like I'm just so lazy like I just don't want to do anything I'm so tired all the time I could nap right now like literally currently if I went and laid down so tired they both prescribed me actually a very similar regimen actually the same regimen which was a supplement called monolaurin a supplement called lemon balm and then one called l-lysine and then if those don't help then to also give me valacyclovir, which is a antiviral that they want me to take for a year. And I asked the doctor, what's the harm in not treating it? Like, what if I just didn't, um, what, what, what then? And she was like, well, you'll continue to feel the way that you feel while it's reactivated. She said it could be reactivated for a month, could be reactivated for years. But basically I said like, what, what if I just choose to do nothing? And she was like, that isn't recommended because Epstein-Barr has been associated with lymphomas, MS, multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer. So she said the, the treatment is really to reduce the viral load in your body so that hopefully you don't cause one of those other very serious things by not treating your reactivated Epstein-Barr, whereas most people don't have issues because of it. It is indicated in many illnesses. And I was like, okay, well, what about ozone? I've heard really good things about like doing ozone therapy. And she's like, I said, I literally said like, is there harm in doing ozone? And she said, everything has the potential for harm, of course, like even drinking too much water, like taking too many vitamins, like everything has the potential for harm. But she said the benefits outweigh the risks of Epstein-Barr, like doing ozone, whatever harm may potentially come from that, is less than the harm from Epstein-Barr. And I was like, wow, that's really fascinating. So I actually, it's not that I wasn't expecting for something to come back positive in my blood work results. It's just that this is, this is confusing to me. And some doctors don't even agree that this needs treatment. Both of the doctors that I saw were like, no, it absolutely needs treatment. Her whole point, and this, this is what she made a really, really good point that really resonated with me because some doctors say reactivated Epstein-Barr is not a thing. You it's not even worth treating. It's like not an active infection where she said that's nonsense. She said it is a type of herpes virus that turns into mono. Everybody has it. She's literally 90% of the population has it. But in the population that it reactivates in, 
it causes symptoms. We know this to be true because you guys come through, you all have it high in your blood work, you all feel terrible. When we do the treatment, you start feeling better. She said, so think of it like this, because it is a type of herpes virus, she's like, how do cold sores come about? It's reactivating. You're activating the herpes virus, activates in your body and it causes cold sores. How does the herpes virus, you have outbreaks like genital herpes, shingles and chicken pox. You have that and then it activates in your body and causes a shingles outbreak. Why can all of those reactivate but not Epstein-Barr, which is a type of herpes virus? She's like, it is a thing that it just happens and it act reactivates in some people and some it doesn't. And so she's like, you are unique and we all have our unique physiology and you just, yeah. So she was like, you just take the, you, know, you need to do the treatments and you hopefully will feel a lot better. And a lot of my patients do feel much, much better. So that's really encouraging to hear that maybe I could feel better. And she also told me that in my blood work, I have very low human growth hormone, which I thought was really weird. I've never even considered that before. She says that when it's really low, like mine is like nearing zero, that can be the cause of a lot of like rapid weight gain and eat hard time losing weight, visceral fat. So like the kind of fat that I have. And so I don't know what really the treatment for that would be other than she said to take GABA because GABA can help increase your human growth hormone. And that can also help with anxiety and things like that. Um, she suggested L-theanine kava for anxiety because I am weaning off of my SSRA right now. I'm doing that just because I don't feel well on it. The reason that I started weaning off in the first place is because while it does dull my anxiety, and that is, that is a fact, it absolutely reduces my racing thoughts, my anxiety. It also dulls everything else too. Like I have like sexual dysfunction from it, which would be like, I mean, TMI, but it's hard to get there like a really hard, like near impossible to, you know. So that's not fun. And also um, I just, have, I, can't, I can't really cry. I have a hard time crying. Um, after reducing, I can definitely cry <laughs> uh, a lot, but I actually would rather feel my feelings. Like it's, it's, it's uncomfortable to feel this much like racing thoughts and rumination and things like that. But I don't know, like antidepressants, I feel like were really, really great for the time that I took them. And I'm still on them. I'm still on, I'm, I'm down to five milligrams right now. I was up at 20 and I was up at 20 like a year ago. I went down to 10 and I've been at 10 for like the last year. And then over the last two and a half months, I've reduced from 10 to five. So I'm do taking it really slow, but I can definitely feel more of my thoughts racing and more like anxiousness. But I feel like at this point, risks are now outweighing the benefits for me. The dullness, the lack of ability to focus, the lack of the, the weight gain, the sexual dysfunction, all of those things are like really, <laughs> they're bothering me. And, I, and I'm having brain fog and all that kind of stuff. And I've heard from time and time again that Lexapro is the hardest SSRI to taper from. And uh, so I'm trying to take it really slow be kind to myself. And then she prescribed me a bunch of things that can help, like as far as herbal remedies and things like that, like things that can help that aren't medication. Of course I have lorazepam if needed. I also wanted to say that if I have to take another medication, I will. If I have to get on another SSRI or an SNRI, I will. I am not trying to vilify them. I have been on them for years. I just want to see if I can live without them. But if I struggle or I'm not able to, you know, handle life without them, I will get back on them. It's interesting because they will make recommendations that are like medication, absolutely. They're like, a, I would say a combination of allopathic and naturopathic, whereas like there are things that can support your immune system, can support you. But hey, you may need the valacyclovir. You may need an antiviral for a year. So it's just kind of nice to um, have two physicians that can help me through that process and both agree with each other's treatment plans. So that was my appointment with the doctor. Everything else in my blood work looked all right other than yeah, my human growth hormo hormone and my like my hormones as well like progesterone and testosterone and estrogen. They're a little whack, but it's also like it just is what it is, you know. And I definitely I I just I've been it's nice to have like the combo like, you know, the mental approach, talking to therapists and getting EMDR and doing all those th sort of things. And then having the, um, you know, doctors help as well to help with the physical symptoms. And then, you know, in my own regard, like trying to take control of my mindset and know that I do have control over my mindset and whether I feel like I do or not, I do. And it's a very, very, very difficult thing to change because it is, like I said, it's almost like this, if you take a trail every single day, that trail is worn down, the brush is pushed back, it is ready for you to walk it. Whereas if you veer off to the left of a path that you've never taken before, there's blackberries growing over it, there's no path on the ground, you're having to step over a bunch of fallen logs, but the more you take that path, 
the more the old one will grow over and the new one will start to push down. And it's at first really uncomfortable and it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Like you're like, I, it doesn't feel right. And that's because it's a, a road less traveled or not traveled at all in my case. I never take that path and now I'm trying to wear it in, you know, and it's just gonna take some time, uh, but trying to be more positive. I've also been, um, instead of just the reading books or like scrolling social media, I've been listening to audiobooks. Uh, this isn't sponsored by the way. I have done some sponsorships with Audible, but I quite literally love love the service. So it's not, this is completely authentic to me. <laughs> And this is not sponsored. Uh, I have done a sponsored video recently, but this isn't. I'm reading a book right now called, or listening to an audio book, not reading a book. Um, it's uh, called Do Nothing. And I actually, it was recommended by a TikTok gal that was talking about um, something called the hedonic treadmill. And that in human brains, um, basically like you could, you always think, oh, okay, when I get blank, then I will be happier and that they discovered that there is a baseline of happiness that people have and that even if i gave you a million dollars the effects of the acquisition of that is only transient so it doesn't it's not actually lasting and it's the hedonic treadmill you will go back to your baseline level of happiness but you'll keep trying to think oh, okay so then that wasn't it so then when i get blank then i will be happy and in fact it's just people searching and searching and searching and realizing that it's actually not a thing that will make you happy because this book is actually all about how it's very fascinating i actually saw this gal recommended on tiktok and i quite like it so far i'm only you know a quarter of the way through it but it's talking about how we used to have a lot of leisure she calls it leisure um in life in general we do, we worked a lot less and we were a lot happier for it because that's actually it's not about doing nothing it's about not doing something for a reason like it would be almost like we don't um play anymore we don't like um just do things for the sake of doing them we have wait there always has to be a purpose for like hustle harder or make money or do art so you can sell it or post it on social media but it's very rare that we do something like karaoke without posting it or knitting or like, and even those things, like not to sell them, just to do them, not even to post them on social media, like playing cornhole, like playing, doing things that have no ultimate purpose other than leisure, other than like you enjoy doing it. And it's very, like we have significantly reduced that. And that was that due to the industrial revolution. And so this book is really, really interesting because it's like a lot of just explanation to how we got the way that we are in the world really before that she was saying like if there was a wagon wheel that needed to be like if your wagon was rolling and then a wheel broke you would fix that wheel you would put it on you'd be like bye whereas after the industrial revolution it was like how many of these can we make in a day how how many wagon wheels can we pump out and it's like it turned from like we had a very variance in our day where we would be like, okay, I'm gonna make this wagon wheel all in, I'm gonna go tend to the horses and then I'm gonna go do this and then I'm gonna go do that. And you had like a big variance in your day getting out into different environments and different places versus after the industrial revolution, it was like, you're gonna stand here and you're gonna make 500 wagon wheels today. And you're gonna stand in the same spot, you're gonna take a quick break and then you're gonna come back and you're gonna stand in that same spot and you're gonna do that same thing for this many hours a day and time became money. It's a really fascinating book and I would highly recommend it if you wanna learn about like why people are ultimately so dissatisfied even when they get everything that they want because it's like that's not what we needed it's not it's the hedonic treadmill and i just found it very very fascinating there was a passage in the book that said talking about how human beings are never really satisfied and that's one of the most frustrating parts of being alive and it's called the hedonic treadmill and she explains it so perfectly in this book called do nothing this book will save your life everyone in the world should buy this book and it's not about doing nothing it's about what happened to us since the industrial revolution and why we're all so depressed <laughs> so she's talking about humans and how we've evolved and she says we have endured incredible hardships and unspeakable tragedy but we developed a coping mechanism to prevent us from slipping into despair it's called the hedonic treadmill it's a tendency in our species to adjust our mood so that no matter what terrible things happen, we quickly return to the same level of happiness we enjoyed before the traumatic event. There is a catch though, it also works in reverse. In other words, if an incredibly happy change occurs in our lives, we don't move forward as happier people. Instead, the hedonic treadmill brings us right back to the state of mind we were in before the raise in pay, the new house, or the lost weight. It means that for many of us, we are never satisfied. Yeah. Imagine you finally earn a million dollars. Euphoria ensues, right? 
you're wrong. Your mind will just adjust and send you right back to your happiness set point. As Dr. Alex Lickerman, the author of The Undefeated Mind on the Science of Constructing the in Indestructible Self explains, our level of happiness may change transiently in response to life events, but then almost always returns to its baseline level as we habituate those events and their consequences over time. That makes us all vulnerable to those who promise us more happiness and a better life through the use of their product, system, or software. No matter what we achieve, no matter how many extra hours we work, we remain unfulfilled. As the 19th century, century economist Henry George wrote, a human is the only animal whose desires increase as they are fed. The only animal that is never satisfied. Human beings are the only animal that's desires increase as they are fed. The only animal who is never satisfied baby. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I find that I'm really liking the book so far. So if you're looking to read something that um, can just maybe change your mindset on like work and the way why the way things are the way that they are with a lot of research and a lot of really good insight. I really am liking that book a lot. So I like this video a lot better than the last one that I filmed because this was the last one was just so negative and I was just so it's not the person that I want to be. And um, the person that I want to be is somebody that can look at life through the lens of delight and appreciation and positivity and hope and not despair and negativity and woe is me and hopelessness, which I feel like is my road most traveled. I don't wanna do that anymore. And so it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna be like the plant that was underwatered and under cared for and eventually the leaves will grow on green but it's going to take a long time so i am i've started this recently trying to really shift my mindset when i have a negative thought pop in i immediately try to replace it with a positive one and then just spiral in my positive statements towards myself even though they don't feel necessarily true and real right now i think the more i say them the more true and real they will become so that's today's video and uh, I'm really glad that I was able to sit down and chat with you guys about this today and also I got my desk mostly cleaned up to where I feel like now I can sit and film a video I want to clean up the rest of my room I feel like I've sort of gotten to a place right now where I am feeling more hopeful talking to the doctor you know getting a, a plan in place and knowing that there are other people out there who have felt better physically and a lot of my mental issues a lot of my um, mental things come from physical sensations that I feel and then they spiral me mentally so I'm gonna try to if I get a physical sensation realize it is just that and it it, and I am safe. I am well. I am going to be well. I am healing. I am getting help. I have a beautiful family. I have a beautiful life. I have a beautiful home. I have a beautiful job. I am very blessed to have this life. I'm building community. I am hopeful for the future. I am well. Those are the things that I want to say to myself. And I think hopefully, not just hopefully, I will do it because I don't want to leave any room for saying that, uh, well, maybe I won't. No, I will. Because if I keep traveling down that road, that road will become clear. I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that um, this video was in any way interesting or helpful for you. It's a long one, almost an hour. Oh, and weight wise, uh, nothing has changed. I actually haven't weighed myself in a few weeks. I don't really know what I weigh, but probably similar. My scale also has a low battery and I just haven't changed it because they're button batteries and I try not to keep those in the house because I have a child and it's a fear of mine. So yes, um, all right. Well, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. Oh. Can you hear me? It's too floppy. Is that better? I cannot with this. What is going on? Why is it so floppy? That's that ain't it. Right, let's put you behind here. Is that better? Is that gonna work? I feel like, I don't know. It won't be floppy. Oh, that's better. That's not good. That's not. If I say I am. Oh Lord. Was I pregnant? I think so, yeah. That's why we're freaking out. <laughs> is that why I was freaking Definitely out? Definitely wasn't because of the bath. <laughs> oh, here it is. Is this it? Yes. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Pit part. They kind of look like, uh, oops. Um, but my balance is, ooh.